Hi there, so we're here trying out um, the latest Avian wing and it's the first for Avian in that this is a wing that we've designed as a dedicated trike wing. So we called this wing the Riot, uh, obviously that's a little nod to the, to the Rio T as in Rio trike but really this is a completely new wing designed from a, a blank sheet of paper. Um, it takes some of the, it takes little bits from the Rio quite a lot from the Puma as well so like the Rio it's quite a low aspect ratio wing it's got quite a quite a sharp nose angle uh, that makes it um, a forgiving wing to fly so it's got a lot of stability in in this wing you can literally take your hands off put them behind your head and even in fairly bumpy conditions like we've got at the moment with it's quite a thermic day today it, it, it bounces around a bit but it it, 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 it does fly um, fly itself it's, it's nice and stable um, what we've also, but what we've taken from the Puma, we've taken the semi-elliptical plan form, so again a nice even distribution of lift. We've taken a tip dihedral. Um, we've got an option of carbon fibre wing tip fairings as well. Uh, we've got the carbon fibre washout rods, the carbon fibre outer leading edges. Um, so it's sort of, although it's a new glider it's picking up the best bits that or the bits that we know from the Rio, the bits that we know from the Puma, putting those together to try and bring in a wing which is forgiving, comfortable to fly, um, but which also has good efficiency and good performance. This is a whole new wing in quite a lot of ways actually. So first off there's the way that it's made is actually new um, in that we didn't start from our previous models. Um, it's got elements of Rio in it, it's got elements of Puma in it as well, but effectively this was a blank sheet of paper when we started. So we've designed it all in the computer from scratch, so it's um, had computational fluid dynamics done on the computer, designed the whole sail in 3D CAD and the frame, and um, the sail patterns were all generated from that master 3D drawing sent straight to the laser cutter, CNC laser cutter that cuts out the panels and then they get stitched together. Um, creating the sail that way does have some real advantages. Um, so when we look around, you'll see, I'll, I'll point out all these, all these extra features and those are features which it would be really hard to have done in a traditional way of working in by hand effectively by two, um, from two dimensional patterns. Um, so generally this wing, it's aimed at being a really good all-round sub-70 wing. So the relatively smaller wing area at 13 square metres um, is about the minimum to be able to comply with the stall speed requirements, um, but it gives us a good top speed, so we've been cruising around at um, 40 to 45 miles an hour quite comfortably. And um, the other thing that we've got with this is because we have this freedom that we get from being able to, to design in 3D, we've been able to choose a new wing section for it as well compared to our previous ones. So in general, this is a wing which is um, intended to be a stable, easy to fly, but with a good turn of speed. The Riot is set up to have very light and neutral handling so that it's very easy to get it into a turn without any adverse yaw and then it just sits in that turn without any tendency to either tighten the turn or to roll itself out until you want it to. So being able to design the wing in three dimensions like this and specifically designing the sail um, all, all in CAD it's let us do things which would be really difficult to do otherwise so what you can see is looking along this wing we actually have these we have we have we've divided the leading edge up into sections here so three sections so this allows us to have a bit of tip dihedral on it um, we're also taking the shape of the leading edge there as well and we've we've taken this leading edge panel a lot further around especially especially at the root and especially at the tip we've taken that panel around a lot further than you'd be able to do if you were trying to make this panel all in one piece um, of course working out how these how these join together 
that would be a near impossible because obviously these are cut as flat panels which are then when they're stitched it it pulls the fabric together to create this shape it's just something that would be next to impossible if you weren't doing it if, if you weren't designing it this way um, it's cleaned up this undersurface quite a lot and what we've also done on this is that we're no longer make, we're not making this using a french seam so most most on most hand gliders and trike wings this seam is what's called a french seam it's it's a it's the way that the seam is stitched um, but what it also does is actually add quite a lot of bulk to it with this we've made it a double lap seam and um, it, it creates a much smoother undersurface and of course on the undersurface of the wing you've actually you, the more you can the more you can get this seam back and the smoother you can get it the better the the, the better the flow over the underside so there's sort of some misconceptions about um, about aircraft fuel and wing design. Um, so one which we're going to tackle head on now is like this idea that a thin wing section is always low drag. This is something which I've seen written on forums several times. And frankly, for low speed wings, and by low speed I mean sort of like less than a couple of hundred miles an hour here, or less. <laughs> Yeah, so you're not as is uh, flying at significant Mach numbers, then actually a thin wing isn't necessarily any less drag than a thick, a more cambered wing. The reason for this is that the job of your wing is generating lift, so the wing is always going to be doing the same amount of work. No matter how thick or thin the wing is, it's having to do enough work to keep all the weight that's hanging underneath it in the air at any time, that's obvious. So if you have a very thin wing, although you sort of look at it from the front and it looks like a knife blade that's cutting towards you, when it's actually in the air, it's not flying like that. It has to fly at an angle of attack to generate the lift, obviously. And, um, and that means that it's generating more drag because it's flying at a higher angle of attack. If you make your wing thicker with an appropriate aerofoil section, a nice cambered deep section like we have here, um, it just means that uh, to generate the same level of lift it's not having to sit at such a high angle of attack so actually the drag penalty from having a thick wing isn't really there but what the advantage of having a thick wing is that it gives you a better stall characteristic softer stall more forgiving as well so we get a really good speed range here we can we can go fast but we can also also slow it down really well as well and it's forgiving when it does stall um, so this is a new wing section that we've used for this on, on this wing. It's, it's different to either our Rio's or the Puma, um, and it it's worked really nicely. Again, this comes into the way that this wing was made because actually building a wing with a thick wing section is harder than building a wing with a thin wing section to get to get the fabric to to get the fabric to get the shape in it. Um, and again, it's something that if we weren't doing this in 3D CAD, it would be really difficult, especially because we've also got complexity here with how the, the undersurface changes its extent as it goes along. And if you just come around a little bit and look along the wing, you just see that you've got a sort of, you've got a bit of an S, um, you've got this sort of semi-elliptical shape here. And what this is doing is it's giving you um, a more even lift distribution. Now this is this actually comes directly from the Puma. Is that um, if you look at this wing in plan form, it's actually um, a little bit more closer to an elliptical wing. So the perfect wing from a performance point of view, efficiency point of view, is when the wing isn't fighting itself. So it's no good having one bit of the wing doing all the lifting and another bit that's that's not pulling its weight effectively. That's just adding drag. You want every bit along the wing to be to be working as hard as it can work. And to do that, what you need is an elliptical distribution of lift. So the middle is, is always going to generate the most lift. And as it goes towards the tips, if you drew a graph of the lift, it would go off in a nice ellipse. And by making the wing um, a bit wider towards, the, well, sort of towards the kind of two third, three quarter of span point, um, we're, we're getting a lot closer to that elliptical lift distribution. This is something that we also do with the Puma and the Evo, our high performance gliders. Um, not really so much on the Rio 2. So, so again, this is this is taking some of those good bits out from the from the Rio and from the Puma. And of course, it's an avian wing, so all of the fittings, all of the hardware is all um, top quality. So the 
the upright fittings are machined from billet aluminium, CNC machine from billet aluminium, um, solid one piece um, fittings for the uprights. The Batten clips are our unique sideways design so that it means that however much load is put on in from flight lift loads you can never have a batten end to pop open in the air. Um, we've got our carbon fibre washout rods, we've got the carbon fibre outer leak edges, we've got the carrier wing folding as standard on this so you, you have the option to um, just as easily when you de-rig it you can de-rig it to about four meters or you can leave those outer leading edges in when you de-rig it and we can just do you a longer bag and you can keep it at full length if you don't want to roll the sail so much.